Welcome back. Yep, you can never predict what this channel is going to feature. Neither can I. But thank you to Christine Vendel at Penn Live Patriot News in Pennsylvania for providing such an informative, informative and well-written article about um, what would otherwise just be something happening on the black corner perhaps go unnoticed has uh, in this case gained like nationwide attention and hopefully positive resolution will occur but we'll find out um so yeah some other news sources have provided additional information about their subject here joseph sobolewski i apologize if i'm mispronouncing that sobolewski uh, stopped at a convenience store where he saw a sign for 20 ounce Mountain Dew bottles, two for three bucks. He grabbed a bottle, slapped two on the counter, and walked out. What he was unaware of is that despite the two for three special, a single bottle is $2.29, not $1.50. So he had shorted the store 29 cents, plus he had shorted the state uh, the remaining 14 cents that would go to tax. And I don't know anything about the store policy, but the store in turn called the police who tracked him down and held him in jail on a $50,000 cash only bond with the possibility of up to seven years in prison for putting this $2 bill on the counter instead of paying $2.29 plus another 14 cents for 43 to 243 because the two for three special does not cover uh, the, you can't just write it this way for $1.50 plus tax. That's not the deal that the store was offering. Could it be? Maybe, but it's not what they were offering. Again, I don't know the store policy. I don't know that the store is listed here, but um, the store who I guess for now remains anonymous, at least in the news, um, they, I guess their policy maybe required calling the police on any kind of theft. Maybe they have an insurance policy and so you can't just let your friends in, take something, and then not report the theft. And while we don't know the politics of this gentleman's relationship to anybody in the store, it looks like he was kind of doing the right thing, trying to do the right thing anyway. If he sees a sign two for three... Uh, if he thinks it's $1.50 a bottle, well, okay. I'm not sure exactly how the math works out. But again, thanks to Penn Live, Patriot News, and Pennsylvania for at least trying to set the record straight. And so, yeah, there's um, a note that, like, more than 10 years ago, he did his first theft, and in 2011, he had stolen a pair of shoes. So he's gone clean, as far as we know, for about 10 years. Um, and yeah, this highlights some concerns with the criminal justice system, according to reform advocates. I'd like to hope that we are all advocates of reform, right? We don't see like mandatory cash only bonds with threats of seven years in prison. We don't see this like being equitable. I don't know. I don't know that that's a mandatory minimum, but many states do have mandatory minimums for certain kinds of crimes. But the, yeah, this article points out that he's facing up to seven years in prison. He was initially bonded at 50000 cash only, and another source gives that this was later changed to a bond with an agreement that if for whatever reason he doesn't show up at the trial, he has to pay some certain amount instead of... Um, just losing the entire... There are bonding companies who will... There are companies who will provide bond under certain conditions. And some conditions are like, well, okay, if say if he doesn't show up at the trial, the company has to pay out $1,000 or something. I don't know the numbers, but... But they really... Uh, later, the judge changed this to, changed this to not be a cash-only bond. But he was still on bond, and I assume he's since been released. 
because he's probably going to show up for the trial, but also, like, does there need to be a trial for this? I don't know. We'll find out. Uh, time will tell. But yeah, for his st uh, theft of shoes, he had to pay more than $866 in fines and fees, and got three months in jail uh, for a probation violation. So, yeah, he had a couple thefts. He got jailed because one of his thefts, I guess, was while he was violating parole. Or probation, rather. Um, and so now he's homeless. Uh, he faces the possibility of three and a half, I guess, yeah, if the charge is brought by prosecution. If a charge is brought, I guess the... Pennsylvania law requires the charge to be between three and a half or seven years. Um, I guess there's a mandatory minimum of three and a half years for the third strike. So, yeah, that's something, isn't it? Uh, for me, I would get the deterrent factor if someone's thefts were getting worse or higher in value. So, yeah. Some people don't really agree with this. Uh, they don't like the way the law is written. Again, that would fall to the Pennsylvania State Court, or Pennsylvania State Congress, rather, to write good laws. And the Pennsylvania State Courts uh, to handle crimes, I suppose. And those courts could maybe rule such a punishment unreasonable in the event that he does get sentenced by some judge, eventually uh, it could work its way up to a Supreme Court and some other judge could say, no, that's like cruel and unusual punishment for this kind of a theft. Assuming that things even escalate that way, and I can't imagine that they will. But prosecutors, in order to prove this case, would actually need to prove that he deliberately calculated that he owed more than he paid so like somebody looking and seeing a sign two for three bucks i mean maybe he's like super smart and he figured this out and he's like ha i'm gonna cheat the system i know that even though it's two for three the way that my state law works that actually that doesn't reduce the price of a single bottle from uh two dollars 29 plus tax to something uh to the amount I paid. He could be silently trying to cheat the system on this sort of thing, but a prosecution would have to prove that that was his mental state if he committed a crime here. Um, yeah, crime can't be committed without a mental state that what you're trying to do is actually something wrong. If you're trying to do the right thing, uh, they can't... Uh, I can't remember the word but you can't be found guilty of a crime if you don't have the mental state that you are trying to commit a crime or you're trying to do something uh, grossly irresponsible. So, grossly negligent or just willful. If you're not of one of those kinds of mindsets where, like, if you're doing your best trying to do the right thing, or, yeah average people trying to do the right thing in almost every situation should not be found responsible. If you're like a fireworks expert and um, you're dealing with a truck full of fireworks or something, and in this case, like if it's your truck, you're moving it around, and there's some understanding that you're supposed to be responsible for the fireworks, then if you start doing things, I don't know, if you start, like, throwing around some kind of flammable stuff, that would be gross negligence, because you took in the fireworks understanding that you're kind of responsible for something extremely dangerous. In this case, it's not something extremely dangerous, it's not something anywhere near where negligence would seem to apply. This is just like he underpaid for soda. And so prosecutors will have to prove that he intentionally uh, deprived the store of the full value of the drink, including tax or not including tax. Um, 
So yeah, they also... I guess they actually do name the store, or at least it's a gas station. Um, so also unclear is why the employee would want to charge or press charges over such a small amount. Um, I see. The clerk uh, confirmed that the gentleman put two bucks on the counter. She followed him outside, informed him of the theft, and uh, he responded that he did pay enough and just drove away. Um, so maybe this store has a policy that you can't just let your friends or strangers or somebody come in and underpay for this sort of stuff. I don't know. Maybe this employee was not trained to whatever the company standard is, or maybe they were trained. Who knows? But uh, regardless of what the company chooses to do, um, yeah, he got arrested for the underpayment. Um, so, can we, let's see, anything else here? Troopers cannot decide to not charge with someone for a criminal case only victims can choose to decline charging, at least according to state police. Um, the state police spokeswoman claims that troopers cannot decide to not charge for criminal cases. Um, so, yeah, they are enforcing the code. Whether or not this statement is accurate, who knows? I would think that no low contender. No, I'm thinking of something else. There, are, a, a jury can choose not to find somebody guilty, despite being given instructions that they can't. They could say the person committed a crime, but they're not guilty anyway. Um, but that's jury. Yeah. Anyway, that's something completely different. Here. The state police spokeswoman says that they have to uh, have to charge everybody. Whether or not it gets prosecuted might be a different matter, but apparently in Pennsylvania, uh, this is the way the executive branch is currently working. And I could see in more contentious cases that that might be something that folks care about, but in this case, um, I don't know. Maybe this is overzealous following of this law in the way that maybe this person, this employee, might be overzealously following a store policy, but maybe, again, insurance or other factors are involved. So things are just this, this cascading wave of failure that just gets worse and worse. Um, under Pennsylvania law, first charge of retail theft where the item stolen is under $150 is graded as a summary offense, the same as like a speeding ticket. And our Pennsylvania law, second offense is a misdemeanor. Third and subsequent offenses, no matter the amount, are all graded as a third degree felony. So, yeah. Other things that are considered third degree felonies are involuntary mans manslaughter, uh, institutional sexual assault, and carrying a firearm without a license. So felony would be like, you're doing something really bad um, and in violation of law. So, yeah, Are also arguably this is a waste of taxpayers' money. So, yeah, there are smarter ways to handle things. Um, who was Flood here? I do not recall. I don't recall seeing Flood's name in this article up above. Oh, here we are director of the state's board of parole um it's the lack of discretion that bothers him because it doesn't factor in the amounts so yeah the person overseeing parole has a different perspective than the troopers on the ground everybody's trying to do their best um uh, aclu's involved no or saying things anyway um, yeah, the state prisons are bulging. We don't need to jail people over this, even though jails and prisons are two different things. Um, so, I don't know. There's a lot more in the article. I don't need to steal the rest of this wonderful author, Christine Vendel's fantastic article that really sums up what's going on here. Um, 
I don't know that I have much more to comment or add other than we'll just have to watch this as it uh, unfolds, see whether or not Pennsylvania actually charges this person with uh, the alleged theft. In order to do that, a prosecutor would have to prove that Joseph Sobolewski deliberately stole in this case and deliberately, like, figured out that even though it's two for three, the actual price of a single bottle is not two bucks. And it seems like from his own statement, according, well, hearsay, but still, according to the employee, he said, like, that she informed him that he had underpaid. He informed her that he had paid enough. So did he have the mental state that he had underpaid while saying that he'd paid enough? I don't know. Prosecutor would have a really tough case to prove here, I think, but we'll see just how far this goes. Um, yeah, the state police have to charge him, but it falls to prosecution. Prosecutors who are locally elected officials, I believe, I think that's customary. So we'll have to see whether or not that's uh, how this plays out. Yeah. I was surprised to see this. This is published uh, September 20th, so not too long ago. Um, but yeah, I assume by now they changed this from being a cash bond to some other sort of conditional bond where he agrees to pay some amount in the event that... Uh, he didn't show up in court or maybe the party posting the bond agrees to pay so much if he didn't show up and he has to pay them to purchase this particular bond instrument so he can get out but i assume by now he's out of jail and still has to deal with all the inconvenience of court and other costs and things and the state has other i mean the state will pay whatever it takes to keep the case moving along uh, however long they choose to keep prosecuting it, I suppose. So, I know this gained attention on FARC, F-A-R-K, so thanks to them for sharing this news with us. And we'll see what other folks think about this. Yeah. But yeah, 43 cent theft. There's a two for three special, but... The actual bottle, the actual cost of a single bottle was not $1.50, but $2.29. So if you put two bucks on the counter and walk out, that's theft. At least under Pennsylvania law. Under some other state law, maybe it's different. Maybe there are some states where if you run a two for three special, that's the same thing as a one, do, uh, one bottle for $1.50. Maybe some states make it illegal to do this kind of two for three special, but not Pennsylvania. So under Pennsylvania law, you can run this kind of special, but then still also charge this much for a single bottle. So isn't that great? Anyway, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what comes of this. I say that, but no, more of this is... Uh, this is more interesting to, like, the armchair folks out there who um, who want to make statements about criminal justice reform and how a three strikes policy and mandatory minimum sentence of three and a half years in the event that this is successfully prosecuted. The prosecutor can't argue for, like, a one-day jail sentence. The prosecutor has to argue for a three and a half year jail sentence if this gets prosecuted. So, yeah. Yeah. See, and it also depends on the store policy. Because, like, just because under state law it is legal to do this kind of an arrangement where you could do two for three but one for 229, like some other stores might choose, you know, two for three means one for 150. In this case, that would not be a crime. So, yeah. For a prosecutor to prove their case, they would have to make sure this guy understood that this was the actual price not including tax. 
And if they can prove that he understood all of this crazy math. Uh, or, yeah, I don't know how they prove this. Uh, I don't understand how any prosecutor could possibly bring this case forward. But the state troopers had to charge the person as if prosecutors could bring it forward. They have to give prosecutors their opportunity because that's what the spokesperson for the state troopers confirmed is that they cannot charge cannot choose or decide to not charge someone on a criminal case but only a victim could choose to decline to charge but state troopers don't have a choice so yeah, if they're called to an incident they enforce the code is the way this is explained so because the store called the store is the victim in this case, the troopers have to charge in this case, uh, allegedly. So, yeah. Yeah. That's America. I mean, this is not America at its finest, but still. State laws are complicated. Um, everything, yeah, it's just really complicated. And maybe laws shouldn't be so complicated. I don't know. So, we'll see. <laughs> yeah, well, you say that their stock price is going to go down. Later on, so the article's author here, uh, Christine Vendel of the Penn Live Patriot News, does actually note that there's a retail store located at an Exxon. So, whether or not the store is owned by Exxon, I don't know. But if it is owned by Exxon, I don't know that the stock price is going to go down or something like this. Uh, if it's some other kind of retail store, I don't know that maybe they don't have stock. Who knows? But, yeah. I'm just wondering, so this, on the internet... You can find this particular story if you search for, like, the Mountain Dew theft. So I'm curious to what extent Mountain Dew is going to be affected by this story. Probably not at all. But, yeah, I would think um, criminal justice reform advocates... I think we should all advocate for criminal justice reform because things like mandatory minimum sentences, as pointed out on John Oliver's program, they're just ridiculously unjust. They take out of prosecutors and out of judges' hands the ability to make rational decisions in cases like this. Uh, but maybe a counter-argument to that would be, well, okay, if this case has to be brought forward, if a prosecutor is going to bring it, the prosecutor has to bring it at a certain standard, or the prosecutor could decline to prosecute it. Because maybe the mandatory minimum is not so much about a prosecutor and the judge forcing such a sentence, but it's about the court can't afford to hear every case, like it can't afford to hear this case, unless the prosecutor can really prove the mental state of this individual was so criminal that they have to be locked up. Um, I don't know that they can do that. So uh, we'll see whether or not this proceeds, um, whether somebody prosecutes this, or if he's just out on bail uh, until such time that um, they decline to prosecute. And then I don't know what happens with the bail bond. He had to pay some amount in order to get out of jail. I don't know who paid for it, if somebody did. I hope somebody did. I hope he's out. I hope he's enjoying freedom and perhaps uh, some other beverage. But, yeah. Uh, it's just kind of crazy how things escalate this way. But I guess the folks who've written the laws hadn't considered a case of this form where somebody had been had some sort of criminal record where previously they had deliberately done bad things and then this time an accident happens i don't know so we'll stay on top of this um i'm sure 
national news will cover resolution of this. Bark itself tends to be good about um, noting when closure comes to a story. And if I fail to note this, somebody else please let me know when this is resolved. But I'll try to stay on top of it, keep track of what happens. So, yeah, if you had thoughts about this, again, I'm letting my opinion known that, um, or be known, that criminal justice uh, in some cases might be okay, might be fine. Um, it's a common saying for prisons to be overflowing with inmates. Uh, it's an expense that just keeps perpetuating and uh, John Oliver's program uh, last week tonight explains this in far greater detail and not helping are cases like this where I really can't imagine a sane prosecutor wanting to prosecute this. And maybe they're obligated to, or they feel some obligation to prosecute all cases, okay. But in such a world, how are they going to prosecute this? I do wonder. They prosecute it like half-heartedly and say, yeah, we're going to try to see if we can find this gentleman guilty, but I don't know how what you would argue this in front of a jury. I don't think you would... I don't think this is the reason people go to law school to study the sort of law. I don't know. He went to a store a few weeks ago Bought something $3.74. Oh, uh, you took a five coin accidentally. Ooh. Wow. Yep. So, anyway, this gained nationwide attention because there's so much need in our nation for reform. For things that matter much more than this. But, um, yeah. In order for a person to be criminally prosecuted, you have to have uh, intentional uh, desire to break the law or to do some wrong. Or otherwise, you have to be grossly negligent in some area where you can't where much better is expected of you. But yeah. Um, and also the gentleman happens to be homeless. There is such a thing as some homeless people committing nonviolent crime in some cases. But like, the guy left two bucks on the counter and walked out. There are cases where like homeless people in the cold in the winter can't get a roof over their head, can't, like, go, um, rent a hotel or anything like that. They just deliberately get jailed so that they can survive the cold in the midst of the winter. That is sometimes an occasional thing. Um, but clearly that's not what's happening here. Should you? Uh, I mean, it's your choice. America's um, the land of the free and the home of the brave. Well, free unless you like underpay for a bottle of Mountain Dew. And then who knows? So, yeah. I, it's just a bit mind-blowing. But all these policies are in place for reasons. So probably the employee was... I assume the employee was conflicted, but the store policy re required them to do what they did. I assume the trooper was conflicted, but the state policy or law required them to do what they did. We'll see whether this escalates to the point where a prosecutor does what they do. Um, yeah, did the community talk about this? Well, I'm sure... I don't know. I'm not... I don't think Pennsylvania State Congress is about to rewrite the law over something like this, but maybe they should. Maybe a three strikes rule, you know, needs a little bit more context. I, who knows? But, yeah. It's kind of amazing how that resolved. 
Uh, so the trooper can't force this person to pay more. All they can do is jail the individual for non-payment. Um, yeah. Now, of course, once they're jailed, there's a bail bond if they want to get out of jail, so... Yeah. Man. U.S. law is complicated. And it gets more and more complicated at a daily rate. I don't think anybody knows how many laws their respective states have. Do you know how many laws your state has? I bet you don't. <laughs> Do you know how many laws your county has? I don't know. Do you know how many federal laws there are? Yeah, so... U.S. law is just, like, way too complicated. And probably is not tailored to handle this particular kind of situation. But there are mandatory laws, so, like, yeah. I don't know. I think back in a simpler time, folks would have said, hey, dude, you just underpaid, you, you have to pay somebody, or I'm going to give you, like, some kind of ticket or something. You can imagine some sheriff going around and saying, you know, you didn't pay for your beer the other night. You don't pay for it. I'm going to lock you up for a little bit until you pay or whatever. But, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Police face strenuous circumstances, too. So... In some respect, it might make sense the way things are. In every respect, though, like, there's going to be some perspective where things don't make sense. And reality's complicated. But we can do better. We just need to talk about stories and find ways to improve. And have hope in humanity. And somehow we'll get past it all. I don't know. So... Um, yeah, this, if nothing else, this will bring attention to all, several other cases where they're just, um, criminal justice needs to be reformed a little bit because there are corner cases where the law is written one way because somebody was thinking one thing when the law was written, somebody was, somebody else, ugh trying to amend said law or prevent it from being written or whatever I was arguing some other case and the way that everybody in the congress agreed that the law be written must have been some kind of compromise between all these extremes uh, but here this is an extreme and should be realized as such so i think the most wild thing that potentially could happen from this, let's just suppose that they manage, um, well, let me think. So say that this gentleman stays locked up for some period of time. Say he's locked up for three and a half years. And then eventually an appeal goes through the Supreme Court who reverses uh, on this case, remands it back down to the lower courts and forces them to um, reimburse him for his time in prison or something. Pot potentially, the craziest thing that could happen is maybe thereafter he sues the lawmaker for his time in prison for all this... Um, or whatever he suffers, because the lawmaker perhaps shouldn't have written such a bad law. Would he succeed on such a civil suit? I doubt it. But one would imagine just a world war justice is possible, where this person who suffered so horribly could have their day in court with uh, folks um, who write the laws. But that's probably not happening. Um, the laws probably work well in most cases. It's just in cases where poor people occasionally get screwed that they don't quite work. But, um, yeah, this is why we need reform to help fix the laws in cases where they don't make sense. 
because prosecutors and judges won't claim that anything needs to be changed. So who will? Who advocates for the folks who um, can't advocate for themselves? There's like the ACLU. ACLU does good work. But who else does it? I don't know. Who's going to do it? I don't know. I mean, is it such a big deal that he is temporarily inconvenienced and jailed and probably free by now? Maybe it's not the end of the world, but still, all this inconvenience is on his shoulders, and I'm sure he's learned something from it, but I hope we've all learned something from it and can, you know, somehow become more active in our counties and states and even paying attention to what's going on at a federal level. I don't know. Hopefully something can be learned and something improved from this, but progress is slow. The law is complicated. Does it need to be so complicated? Maybe. Maybe not. Who knows? It's our American tradition. Yeah, and I hope it improves over time. But um, much thanks to Christine Vendel for writing such a compellingly worded article that so many other news sources picked up the same story. Um, thanks to our U.S. government and the First Amendment freedom of the press for allowing folks to report on stories popular or otherwise. Um, so yeah. Uh, don't know what more I can say. My other thing on my soapbox is I hope that at some point statistics becomes required at a high school level so people can understand when news sources and studies and other sources of information make bold claims about numbers and what things work and what things don't work. Um, hopefully over time if statistics becomes required at a high school level people will become literate in that sort of thing and we'll have fewer accidents. But until then, uh, I guess I uh, hope we learned something from this. And if you have other stories of interest, um, I don't know, uh, let us know. I guess we'll see what we can uh, talk about. Thanks.